Hi everyone, welcome. The tree that we're working beneath today is starting to change its leaves and drop them. As you can see, these are some of the leaves that came from right above our head. And you might be able to hear the leaves rustling up in the tree because it's a pretty windy day. But I figured I'd come out here anyway so we could check out our outdoor worm bin. The outdoor worm bin, or what I like to actually call it an outdoor worm bag because I've got the whole setup in a couple of these grow bags and the grow bag just sits within a an old trash pail. So it's certainly nothing fancy, not one of those commercially bought um, worm bags with the zippers and the harvest panels and all that other stuff. This is just a, uh, uh, a fabric grow bag, a couple of them. That seems to do a really nice job housing our worms. You know, we got little snails. It's so funny, I, I never noticed snails before. Looks like we've also got some of these larvae, which um, we've been finding in my downstairs system as well. I did find a couple of those snails in my downstairs system as well, and I extracted them. Um, it's always kind of a dangerous thing when you bring worms from outside um, in like I did because <laughs> then you've always got to uh, be prepared for lots of little twists and turns and unexpected stuff because chances are you're going to be bringing some stuff in with the worms and you never really know what you're in for so here it was 10 days ago that we last fed these guys and we fed them a huge huge feeding it was a it was a large plastic container that um, you buy salad in, but the salad had already gone bad and started to wilt and was resting on the bottom of the container. So the container was filled up with figs and cucumbers and uh, various stuff. So I had this plastic box full of stuff. Then on top of that, we also gave them a bunch of um, supplemental bedding, which is the bedding that I've got pre-made from downstairs in my wormery. This is about two handfuls that I grabbed. I noticed in the video from last week when I reviewed it that I had actually used four handfuls of bedding beneath the feeding. And um, today, I really don't know what to expect because the feeding was very generous. The application of bedding was very generous. And I wouldn't be surprised if there were leftovers, but this, um, this bin does have an, an estimated population that exceeds 2,900 worms. So you can't keep me to that number. The number is just... Um, a calculated value of what all the different viewers have said in their comments when I ask that we uh, try to estimate how many worms we're placing into a system at any given time. And every time we've come into this system to add worms, we've always done a good job at sort of showing the worms so everyone could see them. And then, then it's always kind of cool to see what people think in terms of how many worms they think they saw or how many, you know, how many worms were collected for the job. So we're already getting into this sort of upper layer where we're bumping into food that was not part of the last feeding. It's actually food that goes back to feedings. These are um, chunks of potato. And they're, um, some of them seem to exhibit signs of wear or decomposition. Maybe some sort of a mold or fungus got on them and they seem to be um, whittling away. But other pieces are seemed kind of fresh almost you know I just snapped that piece in half it didn't bend it simply um, it simply snapped so it's still like a nice crunchy piece of uh, raw potato it's curious to see how long certain things take so we'll see how long it takes for those potato bits to get eaten I use potato peels pretty frequently but on this um, occasion I had a good amount of just leftover uh, old potatoes that were kind of dried out and nasty looking and I just figured you know what let's give them to the worms and I didn't want to obviously I didn't want to just throw in whole potatoes so I chopped them up into little thin slices I thought it would aid in the breakdown process I'm sure it does help but it's certainly a slow process as you can see so now we're getting down into some of the food that was applied last time some of the cucumbers some of the figs some of the lettuce. I mean, after 10 days, I would certainly not expect to see any scraps of lettuce, especially when you've got a 
worm population like this, chomping at the bit to eat whatever you give them. But there's other stuff that I fed last time, like figs, that I never ever feed. So I really had no sense of how long it might take. There's a good number of worms in this system, that's for certain. Every handful I grab is just teeming with worms, working down all that yummy food I gave them last time. The potatoes certainly didn't really uh, cause this sort of a reaction in the worms. You didn't get worms coming out for the potatoes like this, but all that cucumber and figs and lettuce and everything else that they got last time looks like it was a hit. And it looks like they put a pretty good dent into it as well. So I could feel mush in between my fingers and I know it's leftover bits of food from that last feeding, but I don't see any large um, recognizable things from what was fed last time because quite opposite of the potato, I believe that everything that was fed in the last feeding was stuff that I sort of anticipated to be what you might consider a sort of a fast food in a worm bin, food that gets gobbled up quickly and easily by the worms, you know, versus stuff like a potato, which might take quite a bit longer. So let's, uh, you know, and I guess it's probably worth also saying that the fact that the potatoes were not cooked or frozen or anything like that, they were just put in here raw versus all those veggies that they got last time, 10 days ago, were all frozen. Uh, the, the the very freezing and thawing process of vegetables, I believe, does a significant job in breaking the material down too, helping the worms, and maybe even before the worms, more importantly, the bacteria and the microscopic life forms in the um, worm bin to get access to the food and start working this stuff down. Man, we've created such a nice little opening down here, and I certainly don't have as much uh, bedding today is what I used in the last feeding. I didn't even really know how big of a feeding I'd be giving them today, but I think I can go a little bit generous. But um, I gotta run inside to the refrigerator to get them some food. So why don't I leave you guys here with the worms. I'll see if I can align the camera a little bit better to see more of them. <laughs> um, because I just need to run inside, it's two minutes and I'll be back with some yummy food for these little guys. Okay, I'm back. I guess the advantage to me sitting here, and I do it deliberately, is that I'm blocking the, the direct sunlight. So I'm sure every time the direct sunlight streams into here and illuminates something, it makes everything else in the frame probably look really dark and in the shadows. So uh, hopefully me sitting here helps create a more flat, kind of a even lighting scene here. So I figured most of these worms would have retreated into the uh, bedding or tried to get out of the daylight. Some of them don't seem too concerned about the whole thing. So we created quite a nice large deep hole over here. I think I'm even starting to bump into some of the old bedding that we uh, added during the last feeding. The, um, the feeding that I've got for them today might not be quite as large as what they got last time, but it would be um, a couple day's worth of coffee as well as a banana peel or maybe that's two banana peels maybe it's just one banana peel but I've also got a pretty good size bag over here of all kinds of um, cuttings I believe it might be some I don't know is I think there's a number of different um, meals worth of cuttings in here so it's a combination of all different types of greens but it's all frozen once the stuff starts to thaw out it's gonna become um, really easy stuff for the worms to eat I believe so if we were to wait another 10 days again, like we, um, we did this last time, then we might uh, not find many leftovers. I was, uh, I was unsure of how long to wait because I knew that that last feeding was pretty generous. And it did seem to me like 10 days would be a good interval to check back in here to see how they're doing. I got a feeling with a feeding such as this right here, they're gonna do pretty good. 
they're going to be able to break this stuff down pretty fast. So we're going to try to apply things in little layers over here. Especially the coffee. Somehow I find the coffee, if it's just tossed in like in a big mound, uh, the stuff is difficult for the worms to utilize as food. It just sits there as a mound of coffee. And uh, you disturb this thing a month later and there's just nothing inside, nothing going on within it, just a whole bunch of coffee. So I've been wanting to um, sort of stir the coffee in lately. And I hope it helps speed its consumption along. You would think a bite-sized food like coffee would be a real hit and would, you know, go one, two, three in a worm bin, but I've often experienced situations where you put the coffee in and it just sits there. <laughs> so let's see what else. We'll uh, so we just spread this little tasty morsel out a little bit. Okay. Hmm. Add a little bit more coffee. What else we got going on here? There's uh, a little bit more grit. The remainder of the veggies. So it's starting to add up to uh, another somewhat generous feeding. Perhaps almost comparable to what they got last time. You gotta give these little guys credit. They did that food in one, two, three. Although if you think about certain foods like what they got last time, like cucumbers, once that stuff, stuff starts to decompose, it's almost all fluid. It's almost all water, basically. So there's probably not a whole lot of um, solid matter for them to consume. Most of it probably just becomes drippings and sort of becomes melt-in-your-mouth consistency. Gooey stuff. And I'm sure that's kind of what's going to happen with the majority of all these stems and stuff like that. Hopefully, um... Having the coffee around, all that kind of stuff will help speed its uh, breakdown process along. So yeah, I'm going way generous on the, the grit this time, it seems. I've used up about half, if not more than half, of what I came down here with. So, not much left to do here other than just cover things up and let, let everything continue. The moisture level in here is really, really nice. And I guess that's because now we're inspecting the stuff that was pretty much the leftovers of the feeding so yeah obviously all this stuff on top would be because then yeah we got down into some of this stuff here which was out on the very top surface a little bit dry all right let's get this worm back into the bin um so maybe this is a good chance to sort of blend in a little bit of that leafy material that's resting out on top blend it in to help it get access to a little bit of worm traffic so that that stuff can gradually break down a little bit as well and let things in here continue as they've been because they're doing good doing really nice in here this is like the outer husk of a black soldier fly larvae the fly must have already emerged from it but the temperatures now i mean we're getting into the temperatures that are definitely um a little bit too cold for the black soldier flies anymore so i don't think we'll be seeing too much of them anymore this season but the worms do pretty good as the temperatures start to drop so i don't think we have to worry too much about these guys i mean their consumption capability probably will diminish a little bit as the temperatures drop but you know they still have an appetite despite the fact that it's winter time so we'll have to keep an eye on them make sure they're being well fed and well taken care of so that's pretty much it for today as far as our worm bin maintenance goes it's always fun checking in on this outdoor worm bag and after 77 days and eight feedings this being its ninth feeding now the the bin is really looking amazing as far as how it's coming along so much casting material in here um, a lot of bedding blended in with it as well but you know at this age you still kind of expect that and definitely a good worm count
So um, it's clear that this bin is teeming with worms. And um, I've often thought about maybe going back into my compost barrel to recruit even more worms from there, but uh, I don't think it's necessary. I think this, uh, this bag's got a lot, a lot of worms in it. So uh, our estimate of what I believe is 2,907 worms does seem to be about accurate, just based on observations. So that's it for today, everyone. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please remember to leave me a thumbs up. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, everyone, have a great day. Bye now.